First Kings chapter four. So King Solomon was king over all Israel, north and south, all lands. And we're going to look at the political government of Solomon. And these were the princes which he had: Azariah the son of Zadok the priest. So princes would be what we look at princes today is the son of a king, of a queen. But these are people of authority in the kingdom. And who does Solomon call for the authority of the kingdom? The high priest son. Now, we got to look at something here real quick because this chapter is written out of order. We need to go back to chapter 2, verse 26. And then 35. Chapter 2, verse 26. Unto by far the priest said the king, Get thee to Ananoth. Unto thy own fields, for thou art worthy of death. But I will not at this time put thee to death, because thou bearest the ark of the Lord God before David my father, and because thou hast been afflicted in all wherein my father afflicted. So Solomon thrust out Abiathar from being priest unto the Lord. Verse 35, same chapter 2. And the king put ben Beniah, the, the son of Jehoiada, in a room over his host instead of Joab, and Zadok the priest did the king put in the room of Abiathar. We've got to read that because chapter 4 is written before chapter 2. We're going to come on things. You're going to see Abiathar. He's, he's the priest. Wait a minute. And the Bible is not necessarily always in order. If the Bible, and I'm not saying it's out of inspiration, but Job is the, really the first book of the, of the Bible. When you look at the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, it ends with Second Chronicles. Now there is a Bible in the market. You can get it King James. I, I marked my Bible somewhere. You can actually. They proclaim that it's chronicle, chronicle in order. By time. But some of the things you read. You say well wait a minute. What's going on here? It may be just out of order. And it can be. So Zadok here. He's a priest. And Solomon calls one of his sons. And says listen you're, you're in charge. So we see already that Zadok had much into Zadok. El Horatha and Ahiha, the sons of Shishia, scribes. Those are the people who would be in charge of the rules, the word of God. Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahila, the recorder. He would be possibly one of the people that may have written what we're reading today. Or he would be a recorder of money, recorder of good. Somehow he's a he's the record keeper. He's the one that would write something down. Probably first king. And Benaiah, there he is, the son of Jehoiada, there's his father, was over the host. And the Zadok and Abiathar were the priests. Well, chapter two, he removed Abiathar. So it would be right now, as we pick up a chapter three. Only Zadok's the priest. Abiathar, go back home. Go back to Antioch. And Azariah, the son of Nathan, was over the was over the officers. And Zabud, the son of Nathan, was principal off, officer and the king's friend. I don't know who this Nathan is. Now, uh, Nathan I know in the Bible is David's seer. But that doesn't tell us that that's the Nathan. So I'm throwing that out there, but I don't know. And Hashar was over the household. This would be a type of Joseph with Potiphar. Joseph, yes, Potiphar, you're in charge of everything in this house. All the stock, all the servants. You make sure all the cupboards are full. You make sure, you know, everything. That would be a Hashar. That's his job. And Adoram, or Adoram, the son of Adva was over the tribute, taxes, money coming in. So he would be the hated one. And tribute would be money of taxes from other lands, other people. It'd be like, you know, we're not going to destroy you, but you give us money. We'll protect you, but you pay us. <clears throat> Solomon had 12 officers over, <coughs> excuse me, over all Israel, which provided victuals, food, clothing, all needs, for the king and his household. 
Each man his month in a year made provision. So, 12 months in the Jewish year. Every month, Solomon had one officer over that month. You're in charge of this month. And these are the, their names, the son of Hur in Mount Ephraim. The son of Hur, Mount Ephraim. Where's the name? Did you notice that? Here are their names. The son of Hur. Okay, that's the father. Or the son of Deker. That's the father. In Mecca's and in Shabbat and Beth Shemesh and Elon Beth Hanan. The son of Hesti. Why are they not named? In Arbuth. To him pertain Sokol and all the land of Hefer, the son of Abinadab, and all the region of Dor, which had Tabith, the daughter of Solomon, the wife. All right, here's a question. The son of Abinadab married Tabith. Tabith. Who's that? Solomon had daughters, and that's one of them. That must have been something for, for this guy to be allowed to marry one of Solomon's daughters. And Bana, you put an N and it'd be Banana, but Banana, Banana, the son of. Oh, that one's named. The son of Ahilu. It's quite interesting. When you read this list, most of them, well, he's the son of, but there's no name. It'd be like somebody coming up to me and say, well, you're the son of Frank. He didn't even mention my name. So by the son of Hilu, to him pertained Takna and Megiddo. Oh, we know that. Armageddon. And all of Bethshean, which is by Zartan beneath Jezreel from Bethshean to Abel Mahola, even unto the place that is beyond Jechneel. And you find some of these places on a map. The son of Geber. In Ramoth, Ramoth Gilead, to him pertains the towns of Jair, the son of Manasseh, which are in Gilead. To him also pertains the region of Argob, which is Basha. These are good names in the Bible. Three score great cities with walls and brazen bars. So these are great defense cities. They're big cities. Hard to penetrate cities. Ahead of that, the son of Adil, Idol. Well, there's a man his name. Had Mahayim. Ahimenaz was in Naphtali. That's one of the tribes of Israel. He also took Beshmith, the daughter of Solomon. To what? There's another daughter of Solomon. Beshmith. See, if you read your script, oh, you know, I, I, I read my five chapters, I'm done. You miss. And somebody were to say, well, are there daughters of Sol uh, Solomon mentioned in the Bible? I don't think so. I read the Bible all the way through. Yeah, they're right there. And these men and him and as, and there's one who's not even named given, the son of Minadab, whoever. I mean, the son of Minadab, you mean, here's a guy. Solomon is the wisest man ever around of all time. He is king of north and south Israel. He is with God. He's already venturing away, but right now he's with God. God is giving him, hey, what do you want? Name it, claim it. I want wisdom. You got it. And these men are mentioned, they have a particular month that Solomon's household will rely on these men in that month for all supplies. And they, these two men are allowed to marry one of his daughters. That's not just, oh, oh here, take her. That's, that's not like that. But I, but now, the son of Hushai was in Asher and in Allah. Jehoshaphat, the son of Paru in Issachar, that's the tribe in Israel. Shimei, now that's not the Shimei before. Because Shimei, I don't know if they say who Shimei's father is. Uh, we don't, but that's not that Shimei that cursed David, the son of, wait a minute, of Benjamin. I didn't even check something here. I didn't even really. Hey, 2 Samuel 16. 
I don't think it would be the same one. But uh, let me just go. Yeah, sixteen. There came to David Shimei, the son of Gur. Okay, nope, not that Shimei. But in ben, that's funny. Just, in the life of Solomon, there's two Shimeis, and they're both from Benjamin. Be careful when you read your. Oh, I thought scripture was scripture, which is exactly what I did. He went back and checked. A study. Geber, the son of Uri, was in the country of Gilead, in the country of Shion, king of the Amorites, and of Og. You know how many times Og is mentioned? That's one of the giants. When was Jesus born? I don't know. But I have the measurements of Og's bedstead. What did Jesus do when he was eight years old? But I don't know. But there are more mention about Og and then Jesus from four years old to 12, and then from 13 to 30. There is, and I don't know what it is, but he's a giant. And to study, very little of him in the Bible, but there's something about Og, because the Holy Spirit says, there he is again. There he is again. And Israel gets some of his land, a Bashan. And he was the only officer which was in the land. So after all these years of conquering Og, Israel's in the land. Joshua has one man in charge of that area where Og was for provisions. There's something there that Solomon needed. Judah and Israel, see the north and the well, south and north. You see the division already? It's already been and we saw that with David. David really split the kingdom. When he left and come back, Judah's like, hey, come David. You're our brother. Israel's like, well, we got more parts than him. Are many. As the sand which is by the sea in a multitude. So, when you come back over here in 2 Samuel uh, 24, verse 9. And Joab gave to some of the number of the people unto the king that were in Israel 800,000 valiant men. That's not the complete number. 800,000 men are not as a multitude. Joab was displeased with the king. Joab did not even half a job. He just numbered the military valiant men. Have you ever thought that we are in a climate of Israel. Israel, I don't know, I, I've never been there. So Israel is a desert region in m many places, I'm going to say. I can't speak it, I've never been there. But I, I've seen pictures of desert. I've seen the Gobi Desert pictures, and I've seen the areas of Israel where there are desert. There's a lot of sand over there. There's a lot of sand among some beaches. I like to see on the other side of Florida, they tell me the sand is white as, as snow. I want to see that. Have you ever thought to be count all the sand on the, on the beach? And the Bible says the Holy Spirit, Judah and Israel were many as the sand, which is by the sea in multitude. You realize how many Jews there were and have been and forever to be? Eating and drinking and merry, making merry. That's the thing that's going to happen when they kill Moses and Elijah in the tribulation period. They, that even goes far to say sending gifts. But what are they doing? They are under Solomon. They are in peace. We're enjoying the fruits of the labor of God, the land that's milk and honey. I've got fig trees in the backyard. I'm just laying against a fig tree and just shake the tree a little bit, get the fig. There's a guy in the vineyard. He's just sitting there just eating grapes and drinking wine. There's another guy over there. I mean, he's got wine. He's got barley. Look at Ruth, the story of Boaz. I mean, the land is just fruitful and glorious time during King Solomon. That's what the Bible is saying. And King Solomon has a reign of peace. Until he marries all these women and starts serving other gods. But while that temple is now in the process going to be built and being built. 
and finish. There is absolute peace in Israel given by God so that temple can be built. And they're just enjoying it. And Solomon reigned over all the kingdoms from the river unto the land of the Philistines. That's along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. And unto the border of Egypt. Man, he's way down by Egypt land. Strike that up with the United Nuts. Go march into the United Nuts in New York and say, Hey, give Israel that land all the way down to Israel and wipe out the PLO. Oh, we can't do that. Why? Right, the Bible says that was, that was Solomon's territory. Black and white. Because they don't believe the Bible and they don't believe God and they don't have anything to do with the Jews. God will sink their ship. He'll curse them that curse the Jews. And brought presents. <laughs> They're bringing presents to Solomon. And served Solomon all the days of his life. All these nations. Israel. They've got much land. I believe it's recorded when David... David's got the land all the way up to the, to the Euphrates River. And Solomon's provisions, here we go. One day, this is why he's got to have 12 men. One day, we just did 7 to 19. Here are one man for each month for 12 months. Now we're going to break it down for one day. Solomon's kingdom. Solomon's provisions, the supply for one day was 30 measures of fine flour. About a measure of flour every day. There are 30 days in a Jewish calendar. Three score measures of meal. That would be 60. That would be about two measures of meal a day. Ten fat oxen. I'll stop doing division. Fat oxen. Not just for oxen. Fat oxen. Huh? What they eat in one day. One day? Yes, it's for one day. So that would be 30. So they would need 30 measures throughout the month. And they would need 60 measures. I'm, I'm confusing the math here. 30 times 30 is 60 times 30. So they would need 90 measures of flour for the month. 60 times 30 of measures of meal. Okay, okay now I'm getting it. 10 fat oxen. Then times 30 would be 300 oxen a month. Fat oxen. Those fat oxen are going to need hay, grains, water, and 20 oxen out of the pastures. That's interesting. Here are 10 fat oxen. In other words, your job is these 10 oxen for the day. You fatten them up, you get them. Then you go out and pasture. And get 20 oxen out of the fields. A total of, for the day, 30 oxen. And 100 sheep. That'd be lamb. Besides hearts. Okay, uh, let's say okay. Pastor, that's the first time. Pastors is the first time that shows up in the Bible. And it has to deal with oxen. You know, what the, you know what the New Testament say oxen are? They're a type of pastors. The leader of the sheep. I believe Paul says that to Timothy. A hundred sheep. Besides hearts. Plural. That's the first time that shows up. And the only other place it shows up. Is in Lamentations 1.6. Hearts. Robots. Robot. Sears and robots. <laughs> That's what I, I think every time I see that. That's the only time that word shows up. And these are type of deer. So Solomon had venison. Venison showed up with Isaac and uh, Esau. You can't eat deer meat. It's in the Bible. And fallow deer. That's the first time and only time that shows up. And fatted fall. Fatted is the first time that word shows up. Take them birds and chickens and goose and whatever kind of Fatten them up. We need fat oxen and we need fat fall. Feed them well. That, that costs some money. For he had dominion over all the region on this side of the river, Jordan, from Tifshah even to Ezah, 
over all the kings on this side of the river. So not only does King Solomon have Israel, he's the king, but he is a king over kings. You see the type of Christ? There are kings and Solomon's the king of those kings. Not the king of kings, but a king of kings on this side of the river. And he had peace on all sides round about him. And like I said, his reign is peace. And Judah south and Israel north dwelt safely. Every man under his vine and under his fig tree, that's where they're eating and drinking, from Dan north to Beersheba, even to Beersheba south. All the days of Solomon. And reference Isaiah 57 21. Isaiah 57 21. I mean, this is great now. There's no war, no draft, no killing. Isaiah 57 21. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. So, Solomon is a righteous king on the throne. Because there's peace. There's peace. And Solomon had 40,000 stalls, first time that word shows up, of horses. Okay, like I said, we're going to keep going back. Deuteronomy 17, 16. we got to go back. In the law, I wonder if he copied it. Never said. Deuteronomy 17 16. He married an Egyptian wife, that's the first step. Or this could be the first step here, because if this is before, out of order. Deuteronomy 17, verse 16. This is the king, the Jewish king. But he shall not multiply horses to himself nor cause the people to return to Egypt to the end that he should multiply horses. So, he's already violated 40,000 stalls for horses. And 2 Chronicles 9.25 2 Chronicles 9.25 was recorded. Solomon had 4,000 stalls for horses and chariots and 12,000 horsemen. 12,000 horsemen. A horseman is a guy that rides on a horse. And he bestowed the chariot city. He had chariot city and with the king at Jerusalem. So here we go. Already a violation of the law. If this is first out of order what we read, first thing he did is he went and got multiple horses. Next, if, it, if the order it to be, he didn't go to Egypt to get horses, he went to Egypt to get a wife. Pharaoh's daughter. Again, that would have been Deuteronomy 17. He's not supposed to go back to Egypt. God warned Israel many, many times, don't go back to Egypt. For his chariots, 12,000 horses. That's a lot. And those officers provided victory for King Solomon and for all that came unto King Solomon's table. Every man in his month, they lacked nothing. So these men, verse 7 down to 19, like Joseph, there was never to say, Solomon at the table, let me have some another uh, omelet. Oh, sorry, King, we ran out of eggs. Well, uh, Solomon, we're in trouble. We got to do something. We don't have enough to feed that. No, that never happened. There was always a supply. There was always, uh, never a demand. It was always met by these men. <clears throat> nothing, lacked nothing. Barley also is straw for the horses. And dromedaries, that's the first time that word shows up. And dromedaries are fast camels. 
what dromedaries are. Brought they unto the place where the officers were, every man according to his charge. So you got to feed the livestock. You have to feed Solomon. In order to feed Solomon, you got to feed the livestock, and some of them require to be fat. Extra provision. And God gave Solomon wisdom. Now, did we go back out of order? Now we back in chapter 3, where Solomon falls asleep and God appears to him. And we, is chapter 4, verse 1 to 28. All right, I got a little note here. Got a little footnote. All right, now verse 29. Okay, let's get back where we were. I forgot to mention something about Solomon's provision. That's important. Let's put it here. All right, back to Solomon's wisdom where we were last. Where do we leave off last? Here are two harlots, one dead baby, one live baby. One woman's happy. One woman's angry. And, and God gave Solomon wisdom. Well, if we continue from chapter 3, verse 28, nobody else would handle that situation as much as Solomon did through God. Again, think about yourself. Think about, I mean, you're not a king, but just think of the episode. Here comes two people before you, the case at hand. How would you ever figure that out? How? And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding. Again, knowledge is missing. God knows the word knowledge. It's in the Bible. But for Solomon, Solomon, it's not mentioned exceedingly much. And we read that in chapter 3. I understand he's saying much and largeness. That's the only place that word shows up. Largest of heart. Now that doesn't mean he had a heart that was too big for his chest. His thoughts, his cares, his love. Man, it just grew. Outgrew Solomon. He cared for the people. Chapter 3. Lord God, these people are so many. I need to know how to help them. How to take care of them. Even as the sand that's on the seashore. Well, we already saw that. What was that reference to the sand of the seashore in verse 20? The nation of Israel. So what is the Holy Spirit telling us? Solomon had a heart for Israel. Do you know another man in the Bible that had that heart for Israel? Paul. Paul put his life on the line to, to, to witness to the Jews, to, to deal with the Jews. One time he says, listen, I'm done with you guys. I'm going back to, I'm going to the Gentiles. I'm done with you. He gets to Rome after the Jews wanted him dead, after they wanted to judge him. He finally gets to Rome. And what's the first thing he do after he settles down? He goes and gets the Jews and says, listen, I thought you went to the Gentiles, Paul. And Solomon's wisdom exceeded, as excel, excuse me, that's the only time that word shows up, excel. And it's to Solomon. God's going to tell us about that wisdom that he had. Of all the children of the East Country. Now who are they? Now you know them as the three wise men that came to Jesus. But we don't know how many they are. How wise were they? They knew that that star was God. And they knew that that star led to the Messiah. By the scriptures. Israel didn't know it. But the wise men of the East. Joab, the, the men that came to Joab were from the east. They're known for their wisdom. A lot of things, China, east. They were the first developers of uh, gunpowder that's and fireworks. Well, that took skill. I mean, you don't go messing around with this kind of thing and blow yourself up. I don't know if that happened, but they came up with that. So they're known for their wisdom. Solomon exceeded in all the wisdom of Egypt. Now they had wisdom in Egypt. I just saw the other day a picture. I, I, I shared it with. I showed the mouth of an Egyptian. How they did the dental work. And it was interesting that this guy had lost his teeth. And evidently he kept them. And they actually drilled holes in the teeth. And the teeth that were in the mouth. And they put wires. 
to hold the, his original teeth back together. So it was his own teeth for the dentures. And how many years has it been in those teeth, even though the body is gone and decayed, that denture work that those Egyptians did are still lasting. You can't get dentures to last that long today. I looked at that and I'm like, gee, that must have hurt, but who knows? Drilling holes right through the teeth and made their own dentures. That's smart. Do you realize we do not know how they built those, those pyramids? I would have very, very seemingly say that took smarts and wisdom to build those. And those things are lined up with the stars. They're lined up with the, with the sun. They're lined up with the universe. That took wisdom. And the people who built those pyramids, Solomon outlasted them all, according to the Bible. Because Pharaoh, that did not know Joseph, did not know God. And he caused his nation to be destructive. Solomon knows God and he's causing his nation to have peace. For he was wiser, first time that word shows up, than all men. Then Ethan the Israelite, now these are people who are well known, smart in, in Solomon's time. And Heman and Kalkol and Dardad, the sons of Maho. And his fame was in all nations round about. He spanked 3,000 Proverbs, and we got an entire book of Proverbs of Solomon. So who's the author of the book of Proverbs according to the Bible? The first chapter and the first verse says, of Solomon, the king of Israel. His songs were 1,005. So some of the songs in our Bible are written by Solomon. He spanked of trees, and you can see those in Proverbs. From the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, even unto the hyssop that springeth out of the wall. So some kind of ivory. He spanked also of beasts and of fowl and of creepy things and of fishes. And he did. Proverbs. He spoke about the ant. And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all the kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom. And we'll See, later on, there's a Queen of Sheba comes. Hey, man, I just heard so much about you. So just a little inside information about Solomon. 